All right, biologists, let's take a look here at this paper one question, topic seven, in which processes do nucleosomes play a role in eukaryotes? So the options here they give you are tRNA activation, transcription regulation, and DNA supercoining. Let's see what each of those options mean. So nucleosomes, what are nucleosomes? First of all, there is an understanding that IP wants you to know that nucleosomes help to supercoil the DNA. So that is one of our correct answers. But what are nucleosomes? So the thing is, in each cell, you have about 1 meter 80 centimeters of DNA. If you take the DNA of a person, and you stretch it, the entire DNA of one cell, of one single cell, that is about 180 centimeters of DNA in each tiny microscopic cell. So you got to find a way to organize that and to pack all this DNA, not just floating in a tiny, tiny, tiny cell, but inside the nucleus, inside a tiny, tiny, tiny cell. So the way to do it is to supercoil around nucleosomes, just like you have toilet paper and you have several meters of toilet paper, but you've got to find a way to pack it into a tiny practical unit. Well, you can pack your DNA and coil it and wrap around the toilet paper roll of the cell, which is the nucleosome. So it's like you had our toilet paper roll, and then you coil the DNA around it like toilet paper. The nucleosome is an octomer, which means it's made of eight parts. Each of those parts is a protein. So what you have actually is this disk here divided in four, and then divided again in the middle. Each of those slices of pizza here, each of those slices of pizza, so imagine two pizzas, one on top of the other, and you have the pizza divided in four parts, four slices. Each of those slices of pizza is one of the parts of the octomer. So each of these parts is a protein, and you have this pizza here made of four proteins, four slices. You have H, H4 histone, H2A, 2B, 3, and 4. And you have two of those pizzas, one on top of the other. So you have one pizza divided in four parts, made of four slices. Each of those slices is one of the parts of the octomer. So you have H2A. H to B, H3, and H4, all these four parts of the pizza, but you have two pizzas, one on top of the other. You have actually two pizzas, one on top of the other, making this whole structure an eight, eight slices structure. So you have H2, H2. 2A, 2B, 3, and 4. So you have four slices here, four proteins in our pizza, but you have two, one on top of the other. So in total, you have an octomer. You have eight slices, eight proteins, making this um, nucleosome here. You have the histones, and then you have the DNA, this noodle here. This is the DNA. So this DNA coils around the histone complex almost twice. It goes once, it goes twice, and it's here. This is the DNA coiling around the histone, the octomer of histones. And then you have histone age one here on the outside, acting kind of like a clamp. This clamp is making sure that the DNA is not going to uncoil, is not going to separate from the histones. So you have the DNA wrapped around the histone complex and one extra histone called histone H1 on the outside, making sure that the whole thing stays firm. This whole thing here, this is a nucleosome. The histone octomer, the DNA, and the histone H1 on the outside, this whole thing here, this is a histone, uh, sorry, it's a nucleosome. Important things to know, the histones are positively charged. They are proteins with a positive charge. 
And think about it, why is it important? Because DNA is an acid, right? The A in DNA stands for acid, and acids release H+. So if they release H+, what is the charge of the DNA? DNA actually has a negative charge. So the negative charge of the DNA is actually attracted to the positive charge of the histones, and that contributes to keep the whole structure stable. And you can see here the DNA wrapping around the histones, making this beads on a string chromatin. Then this structure coils even further, and then it coils even further, and so on, so on, until you have the maximum condensation of a chromosome during cell division. tRNA activating enzymes illustrate the enzyme substrate specificity and the role of phosphorylation. So when you are doing translation, when you are taking this messenger RNA and you're making a protein based on the instructions on the, the message RNA, you need the tRNA to transport amino acids. So we have here our tRNA. It's this kind of T-looking structure. And you have the anticodon that has to pair with the codon during translation. This is why each codon represents a different amino acid because each tRNA with the anticodon to pair with the codon transports a different amino acid. So when an amino acid is transferred to the three prime end of a tRNA, we say that this tRNA is activated. Now it's charged with the amino acid, it's carrying the amino acid ready to be part of translation. So we have many amino acyl tRNA synthesase proteins, many enzymes, and they are different because different amino acids will require different tRNAs. You do not have the same enzyme for all tRNAs and all amino acids because otherwise, how will the enzyme know which amino acid goes with each tRNA? The enzyme can't know unless you have many enzymes, each enzyme for each amino acid. And this is why we say it's specific because each enzyme goes with each amino acid and the different tRNA, the tRNA, the wrong tRNA doesn't fit. So the enzyme is specific for the substrate. The activation process happens like this. You have the amino acid, it goes into the enzyme, the active site of the enzyme, along with an ATP. The enzyme will break this ATP, release pyrophosphate, so the double P here, instead of breaking the last phosphate, you actually break here, you release two phosphates. Two phosphates is called pyrophosphate. Now this enzyme has the energy required to transfer the amino acid to the tRNA, so the tRNA comes here, receives the amino acid, and everyone is happy. Now my question is, where is the nucleosome in this process? Well, the nucleosome is not here. It's not part of the process. So we can eliminate this from our question. This is not part, this is not a role of the nucleosome. Then finally, nucleosomes help to regulate transcription in eukaryotes. So you can read as expression. So how do you express a gene? You're going to make the mRNA via transcription, and then the ribosome will make the protein via translation. So that's how the gene is expressed as a physical characteristic. Now, you don't want to express every gene all the time in every cell, so you have to regulate transcription. And one of the ways to do that is with nucleosomes. Acetylation makes histones less positive. Remember that they are positive to attract the DNA so if you add an acetyl, it becomes less positive and repels the DNA and opens the chromatin and makes it easier for the gene to be expressed. This loose chromatin is called euchromatin. Now, on the other hand, you can tighten, you can pack the chromatin even more by adding methyl groups, so methylation, and that forms what we call heterochromatin. So heterochromatin is the dense, dark chromatin. 
It's like you're closing the book. You cannot read a book that is closed because it's tightly packed and you cannot access the information inside. Now, when you open the book, it's more relaxed. You can read the book. That's euchromatin. And you can access the information inside. So to transcribe a gene, to express a gene, you have to open the book and read the information. That's euchromatin. It's relaxed with an acetyl here in our nucleosome to make it less positive, repel the DNA, and open the chromatin. So let's go back to our question. In which processes do nucleosomes play a role in eukaryotes? tRNA activation, is it part of a nucleosome? Job description, no. Transcription regulation, does nucleosome, do nucleosomes help regulate transcription? Yes, you can acetylate them, you can methylate them, you can change the transcription, regulate transcription by regulating how tightly wrapped the DNA is around the histones. And also this is part of the nucleosome role to supercoil DNA. So our answers here are two and three only.